for pregnant women to relax and to sleep better? It's a really important question if you think about how important pregnancy is, how important women are. And uh, to help me answer this question is my good friend, Dan Chapman from Red Remedy. So Dan, thanks for being on Whole Earth Radio today. Uh, it's great to be here with you today, Rob. Yeah, thanks so much. I, I um, You're not just the founder of Red Remedies, incredible nutritional supplement company. You and your family have been really important in the health food scene for a long time, pioneers with Sunrise Health Foods here in the Chicago area. So we're, we're going to have kind of a dual discussion here where we're talking about this great new product, Peaceful Mama, that Red Remedies has come out with and some other women's products as you move into that uh, arena, which I think is just really so important in particular filling this need, um, I think for uh, for pregnant women that had not previously really been, been filled, but also talking about it from the health food perspective. So we're gonna talk about this new product, but also kind of um, answer how, where do you find this and why would that be important? Yeah. Absolutely. No, this is a, a great topic today. So looking forward to diving in and uh, really discovering how how is it that we can help um, women in particular uh, with stress? Um, so, I mean, if we really just dive into the topic, stress, stress is something we all deal with. Um, and, and I've been talking about stress for a lot of years. And it used to be that, you know, I, I had to ask people like, do you feel stress? And, and most people would say yes, but not everybody. Uh, but today, Everybody says yes. I, I'm I'm stressed. I experience stress. So so there's no debate on that topic anymore whatsoever. The the question really is, how do we best help people that feel stress? Because again, we all experience it. And the thing that we find is that we all, because we're unique individuals, we might go through the same stress experience like we have the last few years. But we will each come out of that stress experience with different feelings and different symptoms. And so we've got a variety of products that will help people based on how like stress really impacts them uniquely or individually. And so, for example, if, if people's stress feels very anxious, kind of worry and fear, uh, we point to our product called At Ease. If, if stress is very fatiguing, right, because sometimes high stress equals low energy. So we have a product called True Energy that we would best target for that individual who, who I'd say is generally healthy, but high stress, low energy, and I just need more. So True Energy is for them. For individuals whose stress really feels more like low, it pulls you down, it's melancholy, a bit depressive, we would use Enjoy. So all three of those products are targeted to help people deal with stress Again, depending on just how it shows up in you uniquely and individually. And, and we fully realize there's crossover. Um, and that's the beauty of, of working with herbal supplements. When we create formulas like we do at Red Remedies, uh, you use the formula that kind of fits your, your most dominant, I'll say, stress trait. And it's going to help with all of it. So there's, there's no way really to choose the wrong formula. There's only the ability to choose the most right formula. But... But there's a group that we have not been able to help. And that's really what we're here to talk about today. And that group predominantly is stress specific to women and, and women, uh, again, most specifically in that stage of life where they are wanting or attempting to conceive, where they are pregnant or where they are nursing. And we need to have a significant amount of caution for that lady. Um, we want to make sure that the herbs that we're using are absolutely going to be safe for a woman during that stage. Um, and, I, and I would say that um, I, I meet kind of two groups of people. Uh, I meet that group of people that says, well, it's herbs, it's natural. Of course, those are safe. We can take all of those. And then there's the other group of people that you meet who are very afraid of herbs and they're afraid of, of, of all of them and what they might do. And they've heard concerns or their doctor just says, you know, those things aren't studied or they aren't tested. So stay away. 
um, it, you know, it's rare that you meet somebody down the middle that has more of that balanced approach. Um, and, and what I can tell you is while I absolutely, I know based on, you know, solid data that herbs are safe, that doesn't mean that all herbs are non-toxic and it doesn't mean that all herbs should be used during pregnancy or nursing. So we should definitely have a significant amount of caution during that stage of life that's delicate for that woman. And we want to be careful for that, that baby that's developing and coming. So um, yeah, that, so that's a, a really exciting thing for us to be able to present this product, Peaceful Mama, which we know not only is it incredibly effective, uh, but it is absolutely safe uh, for that stage of life. Well, and, you know, I want to mention you've got a really great team uh, with Red Remedies. And, and I think about um, Dr. Gregory Jantz and your partnership with um, the Center, A Place mm -hmm. for Hope. But also your your formulator, Stacy, who is a master herbalist and incredible, you know, asset and um, team member there. And I just think about um, all of the adaptogens that are in some of those other formulas that you named. And it it's interesting because of the maybe the way adaptogens work, people might assume that they're very safe. They might assume, oh, I'm sure pregnant women can take Shazandra very, you know, without, I really, we may not know. I don't know in that particular case. I think it depends, you know, maybe ginseng is specifically contraindicated. Uh, other other things might be just questionable not on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but what you have here, just, you know, to, to, to stay focused on the peaceful mama, I think it's just interesting because you have it's there's no conjecture you're talking real data about safety for pregnant women yeah absolutely and, and that's what's important is uh when again when we're when we're answering a question is it safe we need to make sure that that answer is founded on something that is solid and uh historical use is, is good uh you know in our industry we i we do not discount historical use of herbs and how they're used specifically. And, and it is fascinating. I, I find, you know, nine times out of 10, if, if it is an herb is used in a specific way historically, the odds of finding solid studies and data to support that is remarkable. So I have absolutely learned to not discount, you know, uh, traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, and how they understood and used herbs historically. Uh, but again, when we're dealing with pregnancy and nursing, we want to make sure that not only do we see some history, but what, you know, science is there that is supporting that. And so our, our Peaceful Mamba formula, 100% is absolutely proven to be safe, not just on the science end of it, but on the historical end. And um, the beauty of it is it's a formula that is easy to use. It's simply one capsule a day. And it has been been shown to help reduce anxiousness and to increase uh, um, quality of sleep. And so some of the studies, what they show in that combination is it helps a lady kind of show up to a stressful experience and to respond better. And you may say, well, well what does that mean, right? We, we can't stop stress. I mean, if you're if you're pregnant and you're a mom, especially a mom for the first time, um, you're going to have worries and concerns and fears just because of, of that baby that's developing inside of you that are going to be unique to the worries and fears that that a dad or a, a, da a man might have. You know, I, I'm I'm a dad, and I remember that first time that my wife was pregnant, and I was concerned about all kinds of things. Oh, but yeah. I know that my wife, her concerns were more right? She had to be careful about what she ate and, and concerned about what she put on her body and like everything she was concerned about. If she didn't get a good night's sleep, she was not just concerned about herself. She was concerned about that child, you know, developing inside of her. Um, and so we absolutely, I don't think it's debatable that women have, uh, you might say more, but you certainly will say unique stress in that stage of life. And it's important to understand that that, that stress can affect you and the child. Um, nothing hides from stress in our bodies, especially 
if that stress stays at that high level for long periods. So I, you know, I don't want to concern women. If you have stress, we all do. That's normal. Our bodies are amazing at handling stress. So don't let the stress worry you, but also make sure that you do something about it so that stress doesn't build. Because when, when the stress builds and becomes high level and stays there, that's where we start to have some issues. And, and so it's really important to be able to do something to balance that stress. You know, it, and that can be breathing, it can be light exercise, it can be getting outside, it can be, you know, eating a good meal. Those are all very important things to do. Maybe it's writing or journaling or meditating or whatever for you, or a combination of all of those things. But it's also important to support your body physically inside. Because again, that stress has a physical impact on the body. And the beauty is there are things that we can do to help your body to kind of deal with or cope with that stress. And that's what Peaceful Mama does is it, it provides a sense of quiet and calm in the body during the day. It won't, won't put you to sleep. It allows that quiet and that calm. And so when it's time to fall asleep, your body is able to go into that deep sleep and stay there and, and rest and recuperate well and, and wake up feeling pretty good the next morning. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. I, I um, you know, did a little research on on Lactium when when you first told me about the product. And um, one of the things I found interesting was that there did appear to be some studies that are not just on pregnant women. So this ingredient has also been studied on other uh, group. So yes. it, it is, you're presenting it as a solution for pregnant women because it fills an obvious void. Yes. Um, they're, they're really, if you go into a, a, not just a health food store, but even the drug store and you say, what can a pregnant woman um, take to relax? There, there's been a real void. That's, that's really why you came out with this product and why this ingredient is so unique. Um, but it, it can be used by folks other than pregnant women. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we say this formula is for women or moms in all stages of motherhood. Um, and, you know, it's interesting. One of the questions that I get when I when I do trainings on this formula is it seems almost every single time somebody says, well, you know, can can a man take it? Uh, <laughs> Yes, a, a man can take it. Um, you know, you may not want to show your friends. It is called Peaceful Mama. <laughs> but uh, no, it, it is a formula that really all of us can use. But the significance of it is that we put this formula together designed specifically for women because we know that some of the other kind of outcomes of stress in a woman uniquely are, are is digestive upset. Um, and so it might be, you know, upset stomach. It, it could be, you know, uh, constipation or diarrhea. Uh, oftentimes for women, it, it turns digestively is where that stress kind of lands. And so we've added some other herbs in here, lemon balm, ginger, to kind of well uh, work on balancing and calming the digestive tract at the same time. And, and that's the beauty of having a well-designed formula. You know, at Red Remedies, we believe in designing formulas to solve health challenges. And uh, you mentioned Stacy. Uh, Stacy Littlefield is our master herbalist. Uh, Stacy's been working with me at Red Remedies literally since day one. And I will tell you, you know, the, the difference in a formula designed to, by a master herbalist is the same difference of, you know, having a, a, a meal, just, you know, it's cooked by me. <laughs> and, and I kind of like to cook, but, you know, and, and the food will taste pretty good. But I, I didn't go to culinary school. And so I might use all the same spices, all the same ingredients as a, a master chef, and that dinner will taste very different cooked by that chef than by me. And, and again, while it might be the same spices, they might source those spices from a different place, right? They might use a different part of that plant. They, I mean, that spice that they're using is probably going to be a different quality just because they know more than I do. And that's the difference of, of what we do at Red Remedies by having Stacy being kind of out front designing those formulas and selecting, you know, the herbs that we use in our products. Um, it's the difference between a, a meal cooked by me and a master chef. Stacy creates a remarkable formula that makes a, a profound impact in the way that that formula works for the individual. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I, I think it's, um, you know, a real credit to 
the company and to your approach that, you know, safety is really important. Efficacy is really important. You know, if, if um, you have a product that is safe and effective, you can really um, build up that trust with your customer base that's coming into the health food store, because that is the other part of this conversation, I guess, is that, you know, where do you find a formula like this? You know, where do you find Red Remedies formulas? Well, you find them in your local health food store. Um, yeah. That's obviously important to you, not just because you own a health food store. Um, and, you know, you've certainly expanded your circle, I think, more than a lot of small companies. And I, and I salute you on that. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, um, your work with Dr. Jantz, you know, is really, I think, fairly groundbreaking because you're taking it out of the aisles of the health food store and into a clinical setting. So it really gives a lot of validity to all of your uh, hope and possibility products, as as they're called, you know, that you talked about some of the, the at ease and joy and things like that. And now, you know, Peaceful Mama fitting into that with extending to this um, group of, of people, of pregnant yeah. women that needed something, you know, where they may not be able to take ginseng or what have you, where, where others could. But I just wanted to touch on a little bit, uh, you know, if you could put on your store owner hat for a moment. And as we outline that. And I, I try to say that, you know, I, there's one thing I try to be, Dan, I think people would say that I am an advocate for the independent health food store as an important and, and an important and under-recognized institution yeah. in American life it really is. I mean, it changed my life. Um, I know it changed your life and yeah. shaped your life, right. Growing up and in, in a health food store, as you've talked about many times, and it's such a great story with your mom and how she got better. Um, and then shared that with others. But I I wanted to ask you, I mean, perhaps we could relate it back to that history, but how do you see it changing? Do you see people having this? I mean, I, I, I know the answer to some extent to this, but how is the experience of the customer changing in terms of the health food store and how people find these products? Yeah, you know that, that I appreciate the question. Um, and so let me let me answer by uh, kind of giving a little bit of my experience. And and for me, it starts with my mom, as you said. So, uh, you know, my my family's entry into the natural food world, if you will, was through my mother. Um, this is back in the 1950s. Um, at that time, uh, my mom was in her mid 20s was newly married and found as a young adult, you know, I, I kind of say that her body wasn't cooperating. Um, it, and I say it that way because there was all kinds of things going on in my mom's body that didn't make any sense to her um, and didn't make sense to the doctors that she went to see and talked about. Um, predominantly, the things that my mom experienced was anxiety um, which I think is part of the reason that at Red Remedies, I've been so focused on helping people with like emotional health challenges, because I know the impact of stress in somebody's life. So, you know, anxiety was the big thing. And again, it's 1950s. It, anxiety wasn't understood back then. Um, and, and we're talking about a, a young lady who would go to this doctor. Traditionally, it would, would have been a man and trying to explain the feelings she had. And the fact that she would feel fine one moment and then something would happen that she wouldn't understand. And it was like the ceiling and the walls were caving in. And that anxiousness for her was, was it was a showstopper. Um, and, and that was happening over and over and over where these kind of waves of anxiety would wash over her. And if you live like that long enough, it's exhausting. And that's why I say the higher your stress is, the lower your energy will be. That's just a fact. And that's how it was with my mom. And so it, she would tell stories of, you know, it's 11 o'clock in the morning. She would lay down and take a nap because she couldn't make it to lunchtime. And she's a young lady. Um, and then you live like that long enough. And certainly a little bit of depression is going to come. And, and that none of this made sense to my mom. She didn't understand why she felt anxious. She felt like I have nothing to be depressed or, or sad about, but yet I can't put a smile on my face and I don't feel good. And I just don't understand it. 
And the doctors would like one after another kind of suggest to her that, you know, I think you're just stressed. You got a lot going on. Take the weekend off. You know what? Take a week off. You're going to be fine. They really didn't have anything to share with her of significance. And my mom was absolutely convinced that she was not making this up. This was real. And she was also convinced that there had to be an answer and life did not need to be this way. So, and I, I'm so thankful for that. My mom was so persistent. She did not give up and, and she lived like this. We're not talking about weeks and months. This was years where she was working to find out what in the world is going on in my body. And uh, one day a dentist, so, you know, kind of outside of your traditional medical community, a dentist said, hey, change your diet, do this. And that dentist was pretty convincing, telling my mom, if you follow this diet, you're going to feel different. And that made no sense to my mom whatsoever. She did not think there is any way that making some diet changes is going to impact the way that she felt. She already ate a quote unquote, pretty healthy diet. So did everybody in the fifties, or at least in their minds. Right. Um, but my mom was desperate. So she started this diet, which today we'd call it an elimination diet, right? So you go back to basically one simple food, you eat that for three or four days, you eat nothing else, and you take some notes. How are you feeling? How is it impacting you? So that's an elimination diet. Every three to five days, you add like one very simple food back and pay attention to how you feel. So my mom is one week into this diet and she starts to feel dramatically different. And that was the moment where she made this connection between the food she put in her body and the way her body responded. That was brand new information to her. And it was absolutely fascinating. It kind of lit her up. Uh, my mom was a school teacher, loved to learn. And she was one of those ladies where if she learned something, the people around her were going to learn it too. <laughs> so <laughs> um, especially something that made a profound impact on her life the way that food did. And so she started helping all kinds of other people that she met that had all of these other health challenges. And she would just make similar suggestions. Hey, I, I made this change and it worked for me. Why don't you try that too? And so, you know, kind of years are going by. My mom is feeling better and better as she has figured out uh, in large part the foods that were impacting her and what she could eat. Um, a lot of it for her was foods grown without herbicides and pesticides and that type of thing. And of course, in the 50s, you're not going to go to a health food store and, and shop in the organic produce section. So they were searching throughout the, the whole U.S. for produce that was grown without pesticides, herbicides, and like buying a case of that or driving over here to get this. And so they opened a health food store in 1961 with the whole idea of we have to feed our family and our friends, our community at this point. And so they, they thought we're going to give this experiment one year and see what happens. Um, that was 1961. You know, here we are 60 plus years later and Sunrise Health Foods is still around. And, and so grown, that's the environment. Now have, I grew up uh, five stores, right? And we've, we've got five stores on the South Chicago area, uh, one in Northwest Indiana, and so kind of to answer your question, uh, the long way around is I, I see health food stores as the, the place where a community has an opportunity to learn and improve their health. And what I love about the independent health food store is that environment generally is small enough where uh, like we look at Sunrise Health Foods is that healthy community grocery. So that kind of gives the image of we're small enough where we're going to know your name. We're at least going to know your face and who you are. And it's a place where you can come in. And it's safe. You can ask questions. Um, there, there are no dumb questions here, whatever your level of knowledge is. And what you find in health food stores all across the country is individuals that are passionate about helping others with their health challenges, typically because they, they were in the same boat or maybe still are, all right? So most of us in this industry have had our lives impacted in some pretty dramatic ways by diet and herbs and vitamins and minerals and this whole thing. And so that, as you said, really shaped my life growing up as a little boy going to Sunrise with my mom. And I just fell in love with helping customers, you know, find the things they want and answering their questions and 
And so, yeah, I, 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 you know, I can't get out. I'm, I'm in. Like once you get into the natural food industry, you stay in. Well, I and I love, you know, I'm really interested in the history of American business in general because I think it's just so interesting, you know, uh, our generation sort of being in the middle. Um, you know, our kids' generation now has no clue, with no link to some of these 20th century experiences that you that you and I had sort of maybe perhaps the tail end of, you know, so there's this interesting conundrum there. And and I um, go to like a place like uh, J.R. Watkins in, in Winona there, and they've got the Tiffany glass. And it's just this, that that going back even to the 19th century, you know, so it's like, there is this continuum and the health food store, to me, sits squarely in the middle of that, where the very idea that someone and and you see things coming full circle i think hopefully is what i would would lead up to you know you know the question would be where is the next generation it's interesting where we've been it's important where we've been but we've always been outside the mainstream the thing that has changed to me is that health food has become more mainstream i know you and i were talking at one point you know i love to look at those old sunrise you know things from the 60s and 70s and i'm like that is so cool to just get a slice of what life was like back then and look at a sunrise newsletter from the 60s or 70s it's it's so different just a different time a relic in in a way but then um, you said you were the only kid at school with brown bread you know like (laughs) eating whole wheat bread just that simple thing you know, yeah. and I was the same way. My mom was kind of an early adopter of, you know, shopping at the local health food store. And I don't know, whatever we were eating that we thought was healthy, tiger milk cookies or right. something, yeah. you know, <laughs> but um, it has now become mainstream and, you know, relatively so. And I think the thing that I look at is what have we lost, you know, hmm. to what extent you know, as bigger companies get involved, a lot of people inside the industry lament, you know, just saw a news article the other day, I put it on LinkedIn, where um, Clorox that bought up some prominent natural supplement companies is now trying to sell those off. They tried to go mass market, didn't work out the way they wanted it to. Now they're trying to divest. Yeah. And in the process are the fact that these aren't just pawns on a chessboard. These are companies that hopefully generate products that are impactful in people's life. And we're just kind of, we're not, but the comp- the big money is playing around with these things where when you have a family owned business, to me, yeah. there's a lot more integrity yeah. because there is an, uh, an implicit connection to the importance of what you're doing in people's lives. Yeah. You know, and that's an interesting thing. If you look at the, the, I'll say the business structure of of a Red Remedies, a Sunrise Health Foods, you know, and and I'll say pretty well every independent health food store around the country is when there is a family owned business, there's a human connection, right? As an individual, um, I, I know my customers. So when I'm making a decision, that decision is really with that customer in mind, not not the P&L, not the profit statement. Uh, because it, as an individual, there, there's no way in the world that we would like sacrifice our mission or our our customer just to make a dollar. That's that we we wouldn't do that, right? Over and over and over again, as an independently owned, family owned business, we're really sacrificing a lot of ourselves to do what we're so passionate about, and. You know, in, in America, I mean, America is an economic machine. That's that's the beauty of America on one hand, but it's also part of our challenge is that when that economic machine is a part of our food supply and our healthcare system, and you can't separate the two. Uh, unfortunately, you can't have both. You can either have that, you know, economic machine or something that looks a lot more like socialism. Uh, you know, like it, it doesn't work both ways. But that's also why there is such a strong place in our industry for family owned, 
because family owned can and I know that not every family is perfect and certainly not every decision I've made over the years is perfect, right. but right. But in whole, my desire is to do to, is to drive that mission, which is to serve a customer and to help them make changes in their life to improve their health. So I will, I will make decisions on that all day long, kind of ignoring the, the current day profit, if you will, believing that if I serve that customer well, that over the long term, I'll run a healthy business too. And that's proven out. That's proven out for my family at Sunrise Health Foods. It's proving out for us at RAD. And like I said, it's not perfect, but over time, it really is a wonderful model. And, and I believe that there will be continually a place for an independent health food store, right? So, so what is the state of that business? We've seen other industries where the family owned small shop kind of got pushed out when, you know, corporate America stepped in and that has been happening within the natural food industry, but because of the personal part of what we do, which is helping people change their lives, improve their health, that person in that place, they need somebody to talk to, they need somebody they know they can trust, and that happens face-to-face. -face. It doesn't happen over the internet, it doesn't happen on my website, it doesn't happen on Amazon, it happens in the aisle of a health food store. And that, I believe, is the significance of where we have been historically. Um, and um, and I believe that will continue to be the significance of, you know, the health food industry going forward. And so we'll see a little bit of a divide in that because, you know, what do we see when the Clorox and the Nestle's and the big guys come in and buy up, you know, one of these brands that that you and I love because, you know, we, we've been, you know, supporting and building them for years. Well, you end up with, you know, collectively uh, sugar in the cereal aisle. Let me say it that way, right? It, it wasn't that many years ago. I remember fighting, you know, Florida crystals, that, that natural quote unquote sugar in a cereal box because we had zero cereal with sugar in the aisles of a health food store. And unfortunately, we've kind of lost that battle. If you, if you look at the, a cereal aisle today of a health food store, I don't know, probably 80 or 90% of those cereals have straight sugar in them. And maybe it's organic, maybe it's not, you know, bleached the same way. It's still sugar. So you'll you'll continue to see, I believe, a divide of those smaller startup family-owned brands that are passionate about their mission, that are putting incredible ingredients in there. Um, the, the economics will be a little harder. Those products will be a little more expensive because the ingredients are going to be many times better. Um, and that's what we get at Red Remedies. That's what we get at some of the, you know, if you look at a, you know, uh, any food company that's small startup family owned, you're going to get better ingredients. Yeah. And I was going to say, you know, just as a little add on to, you know, your thought about the, the cereal aisle, I was going to say there are now uh, options. Yep. You know, we've kind of come full circle where there are uh, grain free, you know, probably sugar free options. But now it's it's twelve dollars a box for those. So uh, right. the ones with sugar are only five or six dollars. So right. the food part of our industry, you know, has really kind of like the food business in America, and uh, really um, evolved as part of this economic machine. You know, where um, they've really got it dialed in. And I, having those high standards like you do, um, find myself. Uh, kind of a sucker for that because I'm the guy who's probably going to buy the $12 box of cereal for, for my family and for myself, because, you know, I I'd rather not have the refined sugar because I know how, if there's one thing I know it is how destructive sugar is, you know, especially yeah. the more refined and the larger, the quantities. Um, and, you know, we, we come up with all these different aspects or, or, or uh, substitutes. I should say alternatives, right? To sugar, right, like we you know we're constantly shifting. Is stevia better than xylitol or erythritol? Really, I think you know. To me, part of the the idea is really to train your palate um, to not always crave something sweet because we've shown it with salt. But I think, especially with sugar as well, that if you don't eat sweet stuff all the time, that you won't crave sweet stuff, and maybe that's, that's right. um, part of the 
equation. That, that is 100% part of the equation. There, there's a couple of simple things that all of us should do. And, and I say all of us, and sugar is one of them. Um, you know, we consume, I think the stats right now are about 150 pounds of added sugars every year. Um, and that's not like sugar in an apple or an orange. That is like sugar added to our food, uh, which I'll tell you is probably seven times, eight times where we ought to be. And we, we know sugar is not just, oh, it affects my blood sugar, or maybe it makes me feel a little cloudy, or maybe not so good if I, if I eat too much of it. Sugar is a drug. Sugar is addictive. Sugar does change our palate. Once we have it, we want more of it. Um, and not only that, but the negative impact on sugar, it's kind of like stress in a way. Sugar impacts literally everything. Sugar impacts my brain, and not just the foggy, but People don't realize that sugar stops your brain from metabolizing fat into energy. Our brain gets its energy from fat, and it literally is stopping the very thing from happening that our brain needs. Sugar will shrink the size of your brain, believe it or not. Uh, sugar will impact the cardiovascular system. Of course, we know sugar will impact you know, diabetes, blood sugar metabolism, weight gain, and that type of thing. But it's all of these other health things that are so important to us. And so, yes, and I would say cut out sugar. That's almost impossible, but reduce it dramatically. Find a better way. And reduce the amount of refined sugar, right? And I think that sort of fits into what are your values? What are your core things, you know, that keep it simple? I mean, that just that, keeping it simple, eating real food, eating yeah. less processed food, as, if that's your goal. You know, yeah. it's not how many grams of sugar yeah, that too. But also, where did those grams of sugar right. come from? And that's why, you know, it, it's, we're not very progressive in general on nutrition as a country, but we do have uh, grams of sugar and then grams yeah. from from added sugar on the nutrition yeah. facts panel. Well, so I, I should probably like, mention it's, it's the reason we designed Crave Stop. <laughs> because yeah, we, have a, <laughs> right, we, you. we have Thank a sugar you. problem in America, we, we really do. Uh, even those of you listening that might say, well, I don't, I don't eat that much sugar. Um, even if you are pretty good about sugar, I promise you, if you look at it, it's probably still three times what you ought to be eating and it has a negative impact. So we, we designed Crave Stop to normalize that blood sugar swing, right? And so if we can stop the crash, we can actually stop the craving because that's where the craving happens is in that, that crash, so we can help you make a better food choice. In other words, reduce those cravings. So it, that cycle kind of stops and we can start to normalize it. So yeah, Crave Stop is the, the answer for that. And there, the studies on that formula are also just absolutely remarkable what it will do to not just normalize the cycle, but protect against the, the negative impacts of sugar. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great product. And I think it's obviously, as we're talking here, an important uh, you know, this whole syndrome X thing, right? Where people, uh, they have, they get out of balance and it's because of the way that they're spiking their insulin. And then also that stress uh, response, the cortisol, the high cortisol that comes from always being in fight or flight mode. So I think you really, um, I think you've done a number of important things with Red Remedies to me, but addressing the stress mm -hmm. is is a really important one because um, mental health is just under-recognized, I would say in this country, but I would assume probably in the world is a fair statement. And I yeah. think we want to be like you and I were talking about this, the, the American, you know, the type A work ethic, we just, you know, rub some dirt on it and just press <laughs> on and, and don't be a whiner and just, you know, sometimes that's not the answer. Very often the yeah. answer is to, um, address our feelings and to look very deeply. I think the best solution, the most holistic solution is to be aware of, really be aware of how you're feeling and then to look far and wide for solutions rather than just accepting the solutions that we may default to. For example, I have low energy. I default to better drink more coffee. You know, you, you know to your point the other day, um, maybe taking a nap going in the other direction, you know, right. nurturing your body. And that's what your products, that's what Red Remedies products do. They, they nourish and support the body and they provide a path back to balance 
rather than a quick fix or um, treating a symptom. And I think it's a real, you know, um, a tribute to what your family has done and a great continuation of that to have these products and, and the, you know, your whole team and, and everything about it, I think is just so perfect and great. That's why I was so happy to to do this show today. And, and I hope we can, um, you know, you'll come back at some point in the future. And I, I think we could probably talk all day on some of these things, you know, how it affects the business. And I, I always want to make it applicable to the widest variety of people because I'm kind of a health food nerd. I would I would talk about infra and fruitful right. yield and all these Chicago things that, yeah. you know, may be relevant to a smaller subset of people, but I, I they're very important to us. But I think what's most important, as you identified, is that we are serving others and we are filling a really unique void, different unique voids that people may not even realize are voids. Yeah, I, I, Rob, we could probably follow rabbit trails for about a, a 24 hour episode, but I don't know if anybody would listen that long. So <laughs> we might lose some people. <laughs> no, this is great to do with you. Uh, I appreciate you and your commitment to the industry and, and to help people as well. And um, it, it makes part of what we do really a, a lot of fun um, because, you know, we're making an impact. So, um, yeah, anything that I can do, whether it's the, on the Sunrise Health Food side to impact the health of a community or, you know, design that next formula to help somebody that, that I know, you know, needs help, uh, it's rewarding. Yeah, I, I'm. it's been really exciting to watch and um, I am excited to see you know, where it goes and how it grows. And as always, um, be here wishing you the best. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, thanks, Dan.